We have found a garden orb spider having her breakfast. Thank you. And uh, it's a beetle that is hanging upside down. The spider caught the beetle and has larded it for a little bit and has now removed some of the silk covering to finish her breakfast. So she probably caught this last night sometime. She then injected it with venom to immobilize it and then probably left it wrapped up in her web for a bit for the venom to take effect, not only to immobilize the beetle, but also to start to liquefy the insides of the beetle. She then got hungry and has then retrieved her, her breakfast and is now sucking the liquefied contents of the beetle uh, out of the beetle carcass, which she will discard once she's done. Just have a look at that. This is just deep summer at its best. Large spiders, webs full of prey. Just absolutely fantastic. She's actually got another larded grasshopper right here as well. There you can see a grasshopper. One of the more common grasshoppers that we find here on trees and things that she caught, injected with venom, wrapped up in silk and then left in C2 right here. And she probably would have done that because grasshoppers have legs that kick and those legs have spines on and they can actually do some damage to a spider. I remember once watching a grasshopper and a spider having a bit of a, a combat with one another. The grasshopper had flown into the spider's web the spider then tried to bite and immobilize the grasshopper and the grasshopper was having none of it. It was kicking its back legs out and actually managed to kick off three of the spider's eight legs and puncture the spider's abdomen. I didn't stick around for too long, uh, well for long enough to actually see if those puncture marks proved to be fatal to that particular spider but I can imagine that it was doing some considerable damage to that spider. That grasshopper has got an incredibly strong kick with those long legs, a lot of leverage on those muscles, plus their spines that they've got. And uh, I have no doubt that that uh, poor spider succumbed to its injuries and the grasshopper died from the envenomation. The spider eventually managed to get in for it anyway. So yeah, sometimes the prey does win. In this particular case though, I don't think this beetle's won at all. That spider that you're looking at there now, if you opened up your hand, it's probably about as big as your palm. Now Red, you've just asked me if the spider is venomous. Um, it is to the beetle, it is not to us. So we've got four spiders of medical importance in this country, in South Africa, uh, and this is not one of them. The spiders that are of medical importance to us are the black button spider, the violin spider, and the sack spider in this area with the addition of the six-eyed desert crab spider. How's that for a name? Uh, the six-eyed desert crab spider uh, in the drier western parts of the country. They live in sand, in caves. Um, so those are the four spiders that are of medical importance to us. It doesn't mean that this particular spider wouldn't be able to bite me uh, painfully. She's got quite well-developed fangs. They're quite docile spiders, these particular orbweb spiders. This is the garden orbweb spider. Diagnosed by that very serrated abdomen, that back part, the top part of, that, of the spider. The fact that she groups her legs in groups of two in an X and then if we come out a little bit the addition of the stabilimentum in this particular web. So this zigzag portion of her web that you can see a little bit above her and then be below her as well, that zigzag web that is called a stabilimentum. A little bit of debate as to what it's actually for. Uh, in the orb web spiders it's not uncommon to have these quite bold um, additions to webs and a lot of people think that it's so that large animals can actually see the web and avoid the web before they break it. Um, even though spiders can repair their webs pretty easily, these constructed webs um, take a long time to build frankly and, uh, and also um, even though the spider does constant maintenance on it, she doesn't want to rebuild her web every time a wildebeest or a giraffe comes walking past. Um, there's also a little bit of debate as to whether or not it adds some tensile strength to this particular web. I quite like that. And that means that um, 
The spider can absorb a much larger impact onto the web by giving it some of some extra elast elasticity and that that stabilimentum adds that extra elasticity uh, and therefore allowing the spider to capture and hold a much larger prey than it otherwise normally would. Now Molly, you've just asked me a question and for the life of me it went in my ear from poor Louise and, uh, and went straight back out again. So I'm just going to ask Louise to re-ask your question. Um, so Molly, you asked me what is the largest prey or the biggest prey that she will kill. Molly, she'd probably be able to catch something about the same size as what she is, to be quite honest with you. Um, and that would be any of the flying dragonflies and any of the locusts that we have around here. Um, she'd be able to catch and overpower any of those ones. And so about as big as what she is. So around about the size of your thumb or your forefinger if you've got small hands. So if you're, if you're a large handed person as big as your thumb. Um, in terms of body, that is excluding wings and legs, uh, but if you're a small person about the same size as your, as your forefinger, that's just the body, excluding wings or legs. That's about the size of the prey that she'll be able to catch, and about the size of the largest insects that we have around here as well. We've got an Archie 